Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and you join us, me and my lovely, beautiful, gorgeous fiance, Katie, <laughs> in sunny Cyprus. We're here on holiday actually. It's a place we came, well, a year ago mm -hmm. and we loved it and so we booked it a year ago to come back now and we're here and it's, well, we feel very, very lucky because it's gorgeous. Anyway, in the interest of keeping you guys entertained whilst I'm away, I thought it'd be a great idea to do a bit of a Q&A. Obviously there was a big hiatus I took a few months out of YouTube and so lots of things have changed between then and now and so I asked you guys on Instagram about a week ago and on my YouTube community page for some questions for me to answer in this video and why not use my gorgeous fiance Katie to ask me the questions today so um, well let's get right into it so when are you heading to the Nürburgring again I have a trip to the Nürburgring planned later this month September now isn't it so in a few weeks time mm -hmm. I'll be going there not in a car of my own. I still don't have a car, actually. And I'm not taking the Pixo. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to thrash the Pixo around the Nürburgring? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm heading there in, in a few weeks' time. Oliver Norman, 885, says, where did your interest in cars begin? I think, I think realistically, my interest began where most of uh, my generation would say is probably Top Gear. I know my dad was always massively into cars. You know my dad now. He's mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he's into cars. So I think mm -hmm. maybe I caught on a bit from that. But recently, BBC iPlayer are now showing every single Top Gear series from season one, and I've just been going through them, and I just uh, it's just so nostalgic, and I get so excited watching it. So I think really, you know, those early Top Gear episodes from in in the noughties is where where it all really started for me. Okay, um, is this your full time job? Yes, somehow it is, yeah. Um, it's been my full-time job for almost two years now. During the lockdown, I was working at a, a production company and I got put on furlough and made redundant towards the end of that furlough period, I think in October, November of 2020, at which point I had my YouTube channel already, but it wasn't full-time. I thought, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna go full-time with it, see what happens. And, well, I never looked back. I bought that 7 Series and the channel sort of took off from there. And, you know, it's been tricky to keep it going. And um, it's not, you know, don't earn a lot of money doing it. But we're getting there. And at the moment, yes, it is. It is still my full-time job. Where's somewhere you haven't been yet that you'd like to go? Hmm, great question. There's a lot of places, actually. Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Hawaii. And I would really love to go to Big Island. I think it's the biggest volcano in the world I want to say mm. and you can drive up there's a big observatory up there I'd love to drive up there um, yeah there's a hundred and one other places I could talk about but that's the first one that came to mind mm. what's the best car you've driven mm. probably has to be that 718 Cayman GT4 that I drove recently at that Porsche day there's a video on it actually so if you click on the top right hand side of the screen over there you can go and watch it but uh, well the title of that video is this is the best car I've ever driven I think and it was I mean next level would you ever follow any other passions other than cars on youtube well interestingly enough i do have a, a another youtube channel called flying with joel lots of you will know i'm a massive aviation nerd it's probably my first love actually is, is planes what about me <laughs> that's awkward <laughs> apart from you sweetheart um i actually yeah i have another youtube channel i'll link it up there but um i reviewed sort of flights and stuff and I would love to do that more. I love watching the sort of flight review of people and I would I would love to do that. I just don't think I have the confidence to sit on a plane and film myself. You can do it. I would love to do that. In fact, I'm trying at the moment to start doing my private pilot's license and if I get into a rhythm with that, I might stick a camera up and you know, mm. film it and put it on YouTube. Comment below if you'd be interested to see, see that. Okay, not car related, but what is your all-time favourite song? All-time favourite song? Yeah. Oh, that's too. That's, that's hard. That I honestly, I love. I have a. I, I love all types of music, so that's impossible to ask. Um, at the moment, right now, what I've just added to my playlist is "Crazy" by Seal. Mm. Putting that on repeat at the moment. Will you be getting another Range Rover? Yes, a hundred percent. It's a matter of when. In fact, I'm going to do a video after this talking about all the stuff that's in my shopping list at the moment. And there's probably three or four Range Rovers that I'm currently watching on eBay. Um, if money was no object, 100% I would have a Range Rover in the garage at all times. We had to let the two Range Rovers go for reasons I've spoken about previously. But I know for a fact you love Range Rovers now, don't you? Yes. 
<laughs> so that that's reason enough that we will definitely have one in the future and um maybe i'll try a few other brands first porsche cayenne maybe or Volkswagen Touareg, maybe the one with the v10 but yes 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 definitely i'll have another range rover 100 percent. what's the first car you ever owned a wireg Vauxhall corsa comfort edition 1.2 and it was in a gorgeous sort of galaxy blue i loved that car wrote it off twice twice yeah i think i've spoken about this before but <laughs> i hit a tree in it when trying to race a friend everyone does that as a 17 year old i'm glad i did because it really taught me that you're not invincible on the roads and paid to repair it actually we paid to repair that car off the insurance because young driver claiming on insurance just forget it and then i finally put that car to sleep when i drove it through a natural fours and it never came out the other end in my naivety i thought a natural ford the best way to get through it was to go fast hmm. couldn't have been further from the truth so okay rest in peace course if i have any photos i'll put them up but you can imagine a 2001 y reg course of comfort y553 krb oh, the number plate. I, remember it. I love that car oh. rather than a massive budget you have a 2k budget for a car what do you buy has to be a fun car hmm <laughs> interesting mm. <laughs> <laughs> um probably an old 90s jag maybe an xj6 what does the ou stand for on your private plates literally nothing <laughs> so OOU just sounds like ooh, and that was the only reason I got one uh, that said that. So J22, my first name is Joel, as you know, 22 is my birth date, and I just wanted something that was uniform at the end, so OOO would have been perfect, but it wasn't available, so OOU was the second best. And in fact, then when I had my M240i, I bought M24 OOU, which obviously matched the other plate, but also spelt M240, which was the the thing of the car so, <laughs> so nothing. in other words no nothing <laughs> <laughs> no great do you think you'll ever buy katie her dream car i would love to obviously <laughs> i don't even know what it would be so probably a probably buying back the old jibney green range yeah. Rover. yes yes there's yes, any yes. way if you're watching <laughs> there's any way we can buy that car back one day i think we will won't we I would love that. You would love that. You miss that mm -hmm. car. I miss that car. That broken car. It was so broken, yes. but it was so beautiful. Yeah, agree. We miss that. Mm -hmm. What watches do you have and when, how, why did you get them? So, I do like to wear watches that look like expensive watches, but they're not. Lots of people <laughs> comment saying, oh, typical rich boy with his daddy's Rolex on. <laughs> but I don't have a Rolex. Um, I wish I did. It would have been sold by now to buy another car if I did. Uh, the one I'm wearing at the moment, I don't wear it on holiday but it's the gold one with the black rubber strap that's actually a watch from a company called d franklin i'll put a link below um, and we have glasses from and d. all the other oh yeah and our glasses from d franklin <laughs> as well there we go yes um not sponsored not by d franklin <laughs> get them off but uh, i think it was like a hundred quid watch and it looks great so um that's the one i wear most of the time i've got a couple of other ones that are in victors which you buy on amazon nothing too flashy nothing too expensive at all but um but they tell the time they tell the time what else do you want from a watch? Do you like celery? No. Great. Are you going to do another miles on a single tank challenge in the future? Yes. Yes, I am. And that is going to be getting filmed in a few weeks' time. In a very unlikely car to try that in, let's say. It's just the last car in the world you'd expect to try and do a hypermiling test on. So um, that will be getting filmed in a few weeks. You should be seeing it within the next month or so, I hope. How did you meet Katie and how, how was the engagement proposal? It was very good. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'll let you answer. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a sensitive subject, this, because I actually met Katie on... Well, I discovered Katie on TikTok. You <laughs> had... I had. Quite, quite a big TikTok account. Um, and a few videos had gone viral, hence why I saw them on the For You page. I think we all went on TikTok during lockdown, didn't we? And we're just mm -hmm. looking for things to do. I certainly did discovered you i sent you a message on the social media this is such a the 21st 21st century get together wasn't I it know. but um you saw it and replied and, and we met up and it just went from there really we were dating from from day one and the proposal it wasn't massively planned it was quite spontaneous i'd known for a long time i wanted to propose um but how it actually happened was quite spur of the moment let's say um but it worked out fine as you can see <laughs> Um, but yeah, we met on TikTok and since you're 
recently your TikTok account's just been removed for no reason, which is really actually quite stressful because <laughs> uh, it was part yeah. of your job. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so fun, fun fact: don't you know ever try and contact TikTok about anything because there's not a single person that actually works there. Yeah, you could try, but you won't get anywhere. <laughs> if anyone does know anyone at TikTok, actually, please send me an email here on this email address because we're really trying to get Katie's TikTok uh, account back. It was well a really good account but also part of your business mm. so I've any of, help would be massively appreciated yeah i was gonna say i've kind of given up but i know you never know <laughs> you never know Fingers that would crossed. be lovely that would be lovely okay um is there a car that in your opinion is overlooked underrated or forgotten about in the uk amongst car fans bmw m6 the v10 one the e63 um Everyone loves the E60 M5. You've got Drive Tribe running uh, the E61 Touring, which is the V10. But I just think the M6 gets overlooked. I think it's because it's uh, more of an unattractive car, but I love it. I love an underdog. I think all of that sort of stuff is the stuff that I want to buy is that overlooked stuff. The VW Phaeton, the V10 Touareg. I could, to be honest, I could do a whole video on overlooked cars. Maybe I should. Should I do an old video on that? Yes. All of those words you say, I have no idea what you're talking about. It just sounds like, sounds like numbers. You know what the M6 is, because I never shut up about that thing. Yeah, but I've forgotten. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. I it's tell. the one that sounds like a yeah, it's noisy. Formula One car. Yes. Yeah. I do know that. She about knows. It. I do know that. I've trained you well. <laughs> yes. Do you miss the Z4? Mm, not, not really, because I did like 50 or 60,000 miles in that car over four years it was my only car so I feel like it'd be impossible to miss it because I did every sort of eventuality in that thing and I was certainly ready to have a change when I when I sold it um, and also I, I know the guy that owns it and he is using it to its fullest I mean he took it to the Nürburgring I think pretty soon after he bought it from me so that softens the blow a little bit I do miss thrashing that thing around the Nürburgring that was probably one of the best experiences of my life um, it brought it literally brought me to tears. That was quite an experience. So yeah, I, I miss that car, but I don't, you know, regret moving it on. If I buy a good condition Range Rover, will it break every five minutes, or will I be okay? <laughs> yeah, it will. <laughs> it will break every five minutes. It will. Um, <laughs> look, I don't know. There's 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 unicorns, aren't there? So I think it's I think genuinely it's perfectly possible to to buy a Range Rover and you have very minimal problems with it but from my experience it's not the case having said that i've never bought a really expensive good condition range rover really i mean the second one i bought should have been good but it wasn't it was worse than the green one it was um and it's it's a tricky question to answer because i could buy a newer one next week and run it for two years without a single hitch and then i'd be saying something different so I think the best thing you can do is do your due diligence when you're buying. Look for one with a really good service history, maybe even main dealer or at least specialist from new. Um, minimal amount of owners is always a good sign. Lower mileage can be better depending on what service items it's had done. But yeah, all in all, just do your due diligence when, when buying for the, for the best chance at having something that won't break every five minutes. Uh, what is your ultimate daily use car? ultimate daily use car mm -hmm. i guess i guess it has to be the brand new range rover right mm -hmm. you know what actually i was so the queen of england mm -hmm. still drives around in an l405 rain uh, sorry an l322 range rover like the ones we've had and she obviously doesn't matter when she wants to get in it where she wants to go when she wants to use it it's always going to be in perfect condition because it's the queen, you know, they, can't, the queen. they can't give her a breaking down range of it. <laughs> so that's my answer, is a lovely, beautiful, green, over tan, L322 Range Rover, but it's always maintained, <laughs> and I can just get in it whenever I want, and I know it's going to be perfect. Mm. That's, that would be the dream daily, 100%. Good answer. Would you rather have a BMW or an Audi? BMW. Well, that was quick. Yeah, well... <sighs> Off the top of my head, there's more BMWs that excite me than there are Audis. What's the first Jaguar you'd buy? Ooh, money no object, F-type convertible, V8. Uh, 
money is an object, which it is, probably like an old XJ or an X-Type maybe. I lo I've always loved the X-Type estate. I don't know why I'm looking at you because you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've always loved the X-Type estate. Um, and I've loved, I love the old XJs. So maybe one of those, who knows. Is your dad actually a reverend? Yeah. <laughs> and fun fact, so is my mum. There are a lot more questions, but it's very hot out here. It's probably time to go inside. Isn't <laughs> yeah. it? It's literally 40 degrees. And, um, well, normally I wouldn't be sat here with clothes on, let's put it that way. So, <laughs> can I not say that? <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. And if there's any, look at the size of that lizard. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, so before we melt and also get attacked by that literal dinosaur over there, we'll say goodbye. If there's anything else you wanted to know that didn't get answered in this video, do feel free to comment in the comment section below and I'll endeavour to answer them for you. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do me a favour, subscribe to the channel right now and then you won't miss out on the crazy videos coming over the next few weeks. We're going to Germany, as we just mentioned, and also doing a funny, very strange hypermiling episode and also another one with a twist. So do stay tuned. Thanks all so much for watching. We'll see you very, very soon.